I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm Danielle from Our Roaming Hearts, and today we're going to talk about one of the behind the scenes tours I did at the Biltmore Estate. So while I was there at the Biltmore Estate, I was there at Christmas time and I did a video on my Christmas tour and you can see that in the link above there. But I also did the downstairs, upstairs, I think it's actually called the upstairs downstairs tour. It's kind of a look behind the scenes of what the servants of the house would have seen that the guests and the Vanderbilt really would not have. And this is also many rooms and, and most of the information and stories you will hear were not included in the main tours. So as you start your tour, one of the first things you see is the still working Otis elevator. And this was used when the, the servants had to bring massive amounts of items up and down the stairs. And then you head into the butler's pantry. This is where all the meals were coordinated. This is where they do a good part of the talking about the servant life, such as to be a servant in the house and to be part of the help in the house, you had to be single. The females lived in the house itself in the basement. Uh, unless you were a lady's maid, then you had a room kind of close to uh, Miss Vanderbilt's room. And then the gentleman, the single gentleman lived in the rooms above the stables. Now, if you were married and you worked on the property, you would have a job somewhere else on the property, whether it was the farming, the winery, the landscape, whatever. And then you had a house at Biltmore Village across from what is now the main estate. It's a shopping area now. A little bit of information on the house that they gave here. There are 65 fireplaces in the house, 43 bedrooms. There's 101 uh, rooms, I believe they said. Because of the fireplaces, it would take three men chopping wood all day. They would need 220 cords of wood for the winter at a minimum. So this is just some of the information that they would give. Uh, the Otis elevator that you saw uh, was from the 1895. It was the first in the southeast USA, one of two Otis elevators still in working condition today. The kids of the Vanderbilt still privately own the house. It is the largest privately owned home in the country. Now, as you can see here in the butler's pantry, it's a two-story area. They have some of the famous china. Some of this stuff was only used once for one event and really hadn't been used again. They also have the book that was shared between Mr. Vanderbilt and his chef. His chef would write down the menu based on what they had, the guests that were coming, the events that it was. And then Mr. Vanderbilt would go in with a pencil and cross things out. He would make notes. He would make changes, as you can see there. And it was all kept for record right there. They have a little refrigerator there. It was not a typical icebox. They talk about the technology used for the refrigerator itself. They had a dumbwaiter there between the kitchen. They had one of the male servants' coats, the butler's coat there on display. They showed you out in, there's a little hallway between the butler's pantry and the dining room that had the, basically the call box for the house. It would, any room that called for one of the servants would show up here. My picture got blurred out. I was trying to take a picture as I moved, so I don't have a good picture of that. You do get a back view of the dining room as you head out. You get to see outside here, those little black holes there in the bricks, those are the coal drop that they would bring the coal delivery in and they would go in there that helped fuel the house. They talked about how Frederick Law Olmsted was the designer. He's the same guy that did the landscaping for Central Park and he did the landscaping here as well. As you see in this picture, there is the, off to the left there, there's that little glass room. It almost looks like a little sunroom. That is what is known as the bachelor's wing. Well, after Vanderbilt passed on, uh, the expenses of the house were pretty expensive to keep up, as I'm sure you know. So to save on expenses and the heating bill, Edith and her daughter moved into this part of the house and basically closed off the rest of the house so they weren't having to maintain and heat that part of the house. After her daughter got married, they opened it up again. During the Great Depression, they closed it, but then they brought it back to life and opened it up as a museum and did tours and started to bring tourism into the area. And they talk about all that while they're showing you this area here. From there, you head back inside and you get to see, basically, I believe it was called a seamstress room. They have on display one of the traveling, it's like a traveling closet, basically, that, that one of the guests would bring with their clothes there. 
And this room is where the seamstress would be, where they would do all the mending because they made all their clothes. So if there happened to be a, a rip or tear, it got mended and you continued using it. They said that they would change clothes three to four times a day. They had an outfit for every activity. You know, you would not wear the same clothes that you wore at breakfast for dinner because dinner was considered a very formal event. So you can see here on the table, some of the garments, the mannequin there is wearing a traditional outfit. It is not one of the outfits that Edith Vanderbilt would have worn, but it's a traditional outfit from that day and it is in her size. And you can't really tell, but she's really short. I'm five foot two and she would have been just a little shorter than me from the looks of it. I wasn't able to get too up close. And you can see this is a, like a traveling outfit that they would wear. From there, you head into one of the servants' rooms. This is a ladies' maid room immediately right after the sewing room there. This is where the ladies' maid to Mrs. Vanderbilt would stay. And it's a very basic room. They had a fireplace for heating and the bed and a wash station, everything that they would need. And the reason that the ladies' maid stayed here is because there was a staircase in her room that led right into Mrs. Vanderbilt's closet. And we got to walk through her closet, which is not seen in the regular tours. And she had just rows of all of her stuff. She had her own bathroom, as you can see here. Also, the bathroom is not shown in the main tours. They show a traditional like nightgown that she would have worn, her tub and everything that the ladies' maid would help her with. And then you can see the doorway into her bedroom from the closet closet in the bathroom area and the bedroom is on the main tour and you can see this is just the back shot of the closet there and everything that would have been included and then they take you into a room that has not yet been restored to kind of show you what they have to go through you can see the peeling wallpaper you can see that there is also several different types of wallpaper this was the housekeeper's room they talked about the housekeeper she was paid three hundred dollars a month plus her room and board and that was what she had worked up to she had been there for quite a long time i believe they said 19 years before she retired she saved up all her money she made 300 dollars a month plus they gave her room and board so she really didn't have to spend a lot of money so she was able to save a lot of it and when she retired she moved to florida and bought an orange grove and turned it into a bed and breakfast her name is mrs king and this is what would have been her room at the time. And now they also take you into a couple of guest rooms that are not on the main tour. This one was kind of set up to show you how they would have like the dressing room, the dress, and the ladies maid would be there to help them get dressed because these gowns were absolutely extravagant. And I keep saying the word extravagant, but it's true. It's a very extravagant lifestyle that they had. And you can see here's another guest room that they showed. This one's a more kind of a subdued guest room, but just as much, very much for the guests there. And they were very good at showing a lot of the clothes that they would wear for the day. And they explained what each outfit would have been used for. And this was Cecilia's room, their daughter's room. It was also at one point point I believe used as a uh, like a wrapping like a pack present wrapping room so you see here they have all sorts of information on their daughter and this room is not on the normal tour as well I'm not sure why being it's such a, a family member's room they have information on her they have photographs from her wedding they have uh, one of her outfits on display there uh, they have all the information from her wedding everything there they have pictures of costume parties that they would do and all sorts of information on how she met her husband and their courtship uh, and all that in there and then they have this little guest wrapping station in there and they would talk about how mrs vanderbilt knew every one of the servants on the property and she knew their families and she knew their kids names and she would throughout the year she would personally buy a toy for every one of the kids of the families that lived uh, and helped work on the property and she would wrap them herself and deliver them herself to every one of the families and every one of the kids on the property and she kept a log and they have this as part of the collection where she would write down who she was buying for what she bought that year etc and she just she they cared very much about the people that helped them with the property and then as you exit this tour you exit through some of the more common spaces that you see on the on the tour but this is where you get the beautiful views of the grand staircase you start at because you're at the top by the time that you get to the staircase and you can look down and they have the beautiful circle candles there they have it all done up with the christmas lights and then down at the bottom is the tree and the tree is in the center and the staircase kind of wraps around and it is just done up and it is absolutely beautiful i think i took like 20 pictures of just this area because it was just so beautiful on its own 
And then they leave you there, right? It's basically at the entranceway. You can start your guide. You can start your audio tour from there. Or you can go out and have lunch and come back and do your tour if you, of the house, however you want to do it. And like I said, I did a tour of the house itself. And I will leave a link to that video in the comments below. If you've done any of the other tours, they offer several of other behind the scenes tours. I would love to hear about it in the comments below. I always love to hear about the other tours that they offer. Um, so leave those in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give me a like, comment, a share, share it with family, and subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notifications of my new videos. I have lots of them coming out across from different locations across the United States. And also check out some of the videos listed on your screen here. I know you'll love them. And I can't wait to connect and talk with you again soon.